Welcome back to the final section of our video about circles and ellipses. We're going to quickly learn and to recognize the standard form of equation for circles. So here we have our formula of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And what do you notice about that distinction from ellipses to circles? There is no denominator. And it is no longer equal to 1, it's now equal to r squared. So note the big difference there is that there are no denominators. That means, in essence, a and b must be equal to 1. And finally, uh, can we determine different types of uh, conics just dependent on the information that it gave me? In essence, what is the standard Form. So if I can convert any kind of expression to its standard form, can I figure out what conic it is, at least based off of parabolas, ellipses, and uh, circles? So first thing I'm going to do is convert this to its standard form. A parabola should be x squared or y squared only. That's the easiest one to identify. An ellipse or a circle should be x squared plus y squared. And a hyperbola will be x squared minus y squared or y squared minus x squared. The distinction between an ellipse and a circle is that the circle's denominators will either simplify to 1 or they will have never existed to begin with. So first thing I'm going to do, I notice I've got an x squared and a y squared. Great, so I'm going to group my x's, I'm going to group my y's, and if I've got an extra constant that I don't need, I can move it to the other side. So that's exactly what I did. Grouped x's, group y's, and constant on the other side. I know that the x value and the y value have to become perfect squares, and so I'm going to go ahead and deal with the perfect square on each side. Uh, 9, I can take out. 4, I can factor out. And let's go ahead and deal with the x. The x one is very easy. Since it is just x squared, it just becomes x minus 0 squared. This one, we actually have to account for our perfect square. So if I take 2, divide it by 2, so times a half, and then I square that value, I end up with 1. And that's where that value came from. But if I add 1 to the left, I better add it to the right. However, there is a factor of 4. So I'm not just adding 1, I'm adding 1 times 4. So make sure you note that. I factor back, I adjust on the right-hand side, and now I have a very clear, okay, I see a pattern evolving. But I want this to be equal to the number 1 or potentially r squared. So this could be equal to 6 squared. If it was equal to 6 squared, then this 4 and this 9 should not be here because then, yeah, that could be a circle. But since the 4 and the 9 are there, let's go ahead and just divide by 36. Butterfly the left-hand side to separate our two fractions. 9 over 36 is 1 fourth. 4 over 36 is 1 ninth. So I end up with this. Hey, x and y are squared. There's a plus in between, and denominators are visible. So this is most likely an ellipse. Must be an ellipse. Let's do one more. Again, take it and convert it to standard form. Since it's only x squared, I can already guess it's a parabola. However, just to prove it to myself, let's move it to standard form. So I moved the y to the other side and the 16 because the only thing I want on one side are my x's for a parabola. I need a constant potentially as, you know, anything. It could be 1 or it could be anything else, but a constant and my y's on the other side. If my y was squared, I would be doing the opposite. Y's on one side, constant, and x on the other. So now I end up with this. Because this is squared, I know this has to be a perfect square. So I take 4, divide by 2, and square it. And I end up with uh, 4 again. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Because there was no factor to account for, it is just plus 4. So that's nice and easy. And I end up with a perfect factor on the left and 4y minus 12 on the right. I can factor out a 4, and I'm equal to this statement. Hey, doesn't that look like the standard form of a parabola? In fact, it is. I could get my h value of negative 2. I could set this equal to 4p, so my p value is equal to 1. And here, my k value is already equal to 3, so I'm ready to go. And uh, let's do a third one, x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 6y minus 6. Because both are squared, I can't assume it's a parabola. It could either be an ellipse or a, con uh, a circle or technically a hyperbola. 
So then the first thing I'm going to do is get X's to one uh, section, like I'm going to group it, Y's to one section, and normally the negative 6, we could group it ourselves, or I could go ahead and move that constant over. Now I'm going to deal with, is there anything to factor? Nope, it can't, I can't factor out anything common except for the variables themselves. And since I want to throw in something to make those perfect squares, I'm not going to factor anything. I went ahead and deal, dealt with my perfect square. So remember, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So that's where those values came from. Because I did it on the left, I went ahead and did it on the right. I uh, perfect squared it out. And now we have x plus 1 squared is equal to y minus 3 squared. I have no visible denominators. However, this is not um, equal to, or this could be an r squared, couldn't it? This could be 4 squared. But if I divide it away, I still end up with 16. And I end up with this, an ellipse. Mm. Actually, I think I've got a typo. Because these are equivalent statements where A and B are equal, we made a common error. It's actually not an ellipse. It should have been a circle. Because back here, I could have rewritten, let's go back to the line, I could have rewritten this as 4 squared. And that is the formula of a circle is equal to r squared. So this is a circle. Proof again that it must be a circle is because your eccentricity is going to crap out on you right here, right? If a and b are equivalent factors, then the square root of zero, c is going to be equal to zero. That doesn't really help you. So your eccentricity is zero and an eccentricity of zero is a circle. So double proof that we must have been at a circle. When I divided, my fractions had the same denominator. That's a circle. Where else could I have seen it? Right here, when I realized there is no denominator, there are no factors in or coefficients in front, and this is rootable. It is r squared. So a couple of quick checks there. I got a typo on my own screen. This should not say ellipse. This should say circle. And now it's your opportunity to see if you can calculate your own uh, converted to standard and figure out is it an parabola, an ellipse, a circle, or technically a hyperbola, which we won't see until next time. But that is the end of my video set, so I will see you guys in class.